In this tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural asteroid material in Blender. Now, if you'd like to help support this channel and also get the tutorial files, then you can do that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon. I'll have links in the video description. And also, if you like using procedural materials, then you might want to check out my procedural material packs. So I create packs of 10 procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes, and purchasing those procedural material packs is a great way to help support the channel. I also have a playlist on my YouTube channel where I show you how to create all of the different procedural materials. And then just one last thing before we start, I wanted to give a huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Sketchfab has a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can even upload your own 3D models on the platform. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can also preview 3D models on a phone or tablet. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. All right, now before we start, we're gonna be enabling two different Blender add-ons. So just click right over here on Edit and then open up the Preferences. And then right over here on the Add-ons, just go over here to the Search and I'm gonna to start to type in Node. And then I'm just going to turn on this Node Wrangler add-on. I'll show you how to use it later on in the video. Now also, I'm gonna show you a super quick and easy way to create an asteroid model. Right over here on the Add-ons, again on the Search, you're going to start to type in Extra and then you're gonna turn on the Add Mesh extra objects. So just check mark this and then I will show you how to use it in a moment. All right, so now you can just close the user preferences. All right, so I am gonna be adding this procedural asteroid material on this sphere right here, but I thought it would be cool to also add it on an asteroid object. So let me show you how to create this asteroid object. I'm gonna press Shift A and then I'm gonna to go to Mesh. Now, because we turned on that cool add-on, the Add Mesh Extra Objects, you can see that there are a bunch of different options here to add extra objects. So right up here, you can see that there is this rock generator. So I'm just going to click on the rock generator to add in a rock. So then right down here behind me, um, you can see that there is that add rocks button. You can just open this up and it's going to open up this panel here. Now don't move the rock because if you move the rock or scale it or anything like that, it's going to get rid of these settings. So you can see that there is a number of rocks. There's also like the scale and all these things like that. So you can actually create rocks. But what I want to do is I want to make an asteroid. And so right down here, you can see that there is this presets. So on default, it's set to default, but what I want to do is I want to click on this and then change it to asteroid and check that out. You can see that Blender is procedurally creating this asteroid object. And then also you can click on the use a random seed and turn that off. And then you can just start to play around with the seed. So just change the seed value. I actually like the uh, seed value set to three. That looks pretty good. I really like that asteroid. So I can just click on this now to close that. And if you tab into edit mode, you can see that this is actually a very, very simple object. But if you click right over here on the modifiers, you can see that Blender has automatically added in some modifiers. So it's added in some subsurf modifiers to give it more detail. And then it's using all of these displacement modifiers to create the asteroid. So now I can just move this into place. So I'm just going to go into the camera view and I'm just gonna kind of move these over here, maybe scale them down a little bit. Um, and then also for this sphere here, I just pressed Shift A and I added an icosphere. And then again, right behind me, if you click on the add icosphere settings, I just turned the subdivisions up so that it was very smooth. Um, and then I also shaded this object smooth using the object context menu. And then also to help me with the lighting, I went right over here onto the world properties and I added in this machine shop 02 1k HDR and this is from polyhaven.com so if you'd like to use the same HDRI that I'm using I'll have the link in the description and then I didn't want the strength to be super super bright so I turned the strength to 0.8 so it was a little bit less strong and then I did want a very bright light shining on these asteroids so what I did is I pressed shift a and I added a plane and then on this plane here I added a subdivision surface modifier so that it's circular and then right over here on the materials um, I just added a material and I changed it to an emission so that it is emitting light. All right, so I am going to be using displacements within the material in Blender. If you don't want to use displacements, you don't have to. It's totally optional, but I'm going to be using displacements. So let me just show you what we need to do to set up the displacement. So first, I'm just going to click on new here to add a new material, and I'm just going to rename it to asteroid. 
Now to get the displacements to work, we're going to click right over here on the render properties. So if you want the displacement in the material to work, you need to set it to cycles because EV doesn't support the displacement in the materials. So just set this to cycles if you want to use the displacement. And then also on the feature set here, this needs to be set to experimental. So now what we need to do is we need to go right down here to the material properties and I'm going to scroll all the way down and then right down here under the settings tab, if you open this up, you can see that there is a surface tab and if you open this up you can see that there are some displacement settings so I'm gonna click on this and I want to change it to displacement and bump and that's telling the material that you can use the displacement and then just one last thing I want to do I want to click right over here on the modifier properties and I want to add a subdivision surface modifier so I'm adding the subdivision surface modifier because I want to use this adaptive subdivision so because we've turned on those other settings we now have this adaptive subdivision setting and then what this will do is it'll add more detail to the displacement where we need it so where it's closer up to the camera it's going to add more detail and then where it's farther away it'll add less detail all right so now that that's all out of the way let's get started with the procedural material so i'll press shift a and i'm going to start by adding a noise texture and i'll just drop the noise texture right down here now using the feature from the node wrangler i can hold down the control and shift key and then click on this node and that is going to preview the node so now we can see it on the model and then also using another feature from the node wrangler with this noise texture selected i'm going to press ctrl t and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping now i don't need the mapping node so i'm going to press x to delete it and then i actually want to use the object and i'm going to plug the object up to the vector and that way it'll place the noise texture on the object more evenly so on this noise texture here i'm going to set the scale to six so that it has a bit more scale and then i'm going to set the detail all the way up to 16 so it's very detailed so there's a lot more detail in there. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna have this noise texture with this detail, but then I also just wanna have some big lumps of color, some darker colors and some lighter colors. So what I'm gonna do is select this noise texture and I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate it and I'll drop it right down here. And then I can hold down the Control and Shift key and click on the noise texture to preview it. And then I also wanna set the object up to the vector. Now on this noise texture, I wanna set the scale to two, and you can see that now there's just a bunch of big bumps of color, and then the detail, I'm gonna set that to one, and you can see now there's just these little lumps of color, and that is what I want. So now what I wanna do is I wanna combine these two together so that there are some darker areas and some lighter areas, uh, but then we still have all this detail right here. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and to combine them, I'm going to add a mix RGB, and I'll just drop it right down here, and then I wanna plug the factor of the first one into color two and then I want to plug the factor of the bottom one into color one so I can now control shift and click on this to preview it so now I want to click on this mix here and I want to change it to multiply and so now when I turn this factor up you can see that it just starts off with the big lumps of color but then when I turn the factor up you can see it's adding in all the detail from the first noise texture now I also want to add some little holes in the asteroid to make it look like maybe there are some craters and just add some more detail so I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna search for a Voronoi texture, and I'll just drop the Voronoi texture right down here. So I can now plug the object into the vector right there, and then I can control, shift, and click on it to preview that. And then the scale here, I wanna set that to 10 so that there are a lot more holes. So now we can just add this to the color. So right here on this multiply, I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate it and drop it right down here. I can now plug the Voronoi texture into color two, and then I can plug this multiply, this color right here into color one. So if I control shift and click on this now, you can see that it's adding the little dots there on top, um, but I want the dots to be a lot smaller and I want them to be very contrasty. So to do that, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and I'll just drop the color ramp node right down here. So if I start to drag these two tabs out, uh, if I control shift and click on the color ramp, you can see that when I drag the tabs out and when I drag them together, they're gonna to be more contrasty. So I wanna drag them both pretty close so I'm gonna drag them both like that so it's very contrasty. So now if I control shift and click on the multiply, you can see that it's just adding those dots on top of our original texture. And then the factor right here, you can turn this down if you wanna make it more subtle. And I do wanna make it more subtle because I don't want it to be super, super dark like this. So the factor here, I'm gonna turn that to like a 0.3 so it is darker, but you can still see it. All right, so let's now take this multiply and I'm gonna plug the color into the base color and I can control shift and click on this to preview it. Now I wanna change the colors a little bit more because I don't quite like 
how they are. So I'll press Shift A and I'm gonna search for another color ramp. Let's just drop the color ramp right down here. So I'm gonna click on the white tab and then I will make this a very light color. It's kind of gonna be like a light gray. And then I'm gonna drag it out so it's more contrasty. And then we can also control Shift and click on it to preview it. And then I also want to add some more gray into this material. So I'm gonna click on the plus right here and that's going to add a new tab. And I want this tab to be a lot darker. So it's still gonna be a gray color, but it is gonna be quite a bit darker. And then I wanna drag it out so that it adds a lot more darkness. You can see it's adding those little dark bits, um, but it's not all over the place. All right, so let's control shift and click back on the principled BSDF and that looks a lot better. Now, if you zoom in here, you can see that it's actually not very detailed and I do wanna make it very detailed. So to add even more detail to this material, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for another noise texture and I'll just drop this noise texture right up here. And then I can plug this object right here up to the vector again. And then I wanna control shift and click on the noise texture to preview it. So the scale here, I'm gonna set that to like a 30. So there's tons more detail. And then I'll also turn the detail up to 16. So it's very detailed. And then the roughness here, I'm also gonna turn that to a 0.6. So it has a little bit more roughness. So now I just want to add all this detail here into the color. So I'm gonna take this multiply and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. And I'm just gonna drop it right down here, right next to it. So I can now take the factor and I'm going to plug that into color two. And then color one is going to be this multiply right here. So I can now control shift and click on it to preview it. So when we turn up this factor, it's going to add more and more of that detail. So I wanna turn it all the way up to one. So now you can see if I control shift and click on this, there is it before. And then if I control shift and click on this, it's adding all that detail from the noise texture. And then again, I can control shift and click on the principle. And you can see that has a lot more detail. Now you can see that this asteroid material is actually a little bit shiny, but asteroids aren't very shiny because they are just kind of like rocks floating in space. And so they are very very dry so they're not very shiny and also rocks aren't very shiny so I want to take this color here and plug it into the roughness so that we can control the roughness values now you can see that right now it's making it very shiny so I want to control the roughness so again I'll press shift a and I'm gonna search for another color ramp and I'll just drop the color ramp right down here so if you click on the black tab and change the color I'm gonna make the color a lot brighter so it's very bright just something like that so you can see that the brighter you get it the more rough it's going to be so if you turn it down it is very shiny but if you turn it up it's going to be very rough so now I want to put this data into the normal to give it some bump so I'll press shift a and I'm going to search for a bump node because we need to convert it to a normal data so I'll just add the bump node right here and then I'm going to take the color from this multiply and I'm gonna plug this into the height and then I can plug the normal into the normal now it is a little bit strong right now so I'm gonna turn the strength down to like a 0.6 so it's not quite as strong now I do want to give it even more bump using this noise texture right here but I don't want it to be super strong because it is very noisy so this bump right here I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate it and I'm just gonna drop it right down here so I just want the normal to be going into the normal so now we have this extra height value that we can add more data to so I'm just going to take the factor from this noise texture the very detailed noise texture and I'm gonna take the factor and plug that into the height and then you can see the final material has a lot more detail now it is too strong right now because it is very detailed so this bump node right here this second one I'm gonna turn the strength down to like a 0.3. So we still have that detail in there. If you click on this bump and press M to mute it, you can see that there's not quite as much detail. And then if you press M, that will unmute it. So you can definitely see that adds more detail, but not too much. All right, so that is pretty much it for the procedural asteroid material. You can see that's really starting to look like an asteroid. But now I want to add the displacement to make it all bumpy, because right now this is just a circular object. Um, and so that doesn't really look like an asteroid. It looks more like a moon right now. So to add the displacement, I am going to press shift A and we first need to add the displacement node. So I'm gonna search for the displacement node and drop it right down here. And then we can plug the displacement into the displacement on the material output. So now I wanna go right back over here to the second multiply and I wanna plug this color right over here into the height value on the displacement. Now the mid level right here, I'm gonna turn that to zero on the displacement because I don't want any mid-level, and then it is way too strong right now. So I'm gonna turn the scale way down to like a 0.15, just hit enter. All right, and that looks really good. So you can see that it definitely has some bumps there, but it's not too strong. Now you could turn this up if you wanted to, like you could maybe turn this to like a 0.3, or maybe even like turn this to a 0.5. So that looks very bumpy, um, but I just wanna change it to a 0.15. I do like that a little bit better for this circular material. 
All right, and that is it. That is the procedural asteroid material. Now I wanna add it to this one as well. So I can just click right here and then I can just click on this little button right here and this is the drop down, and I'm just gonna drag and I'm just gonna drop it on this asteroid right here. Now if you zoom in here over to this asteroid, you can see that we didn't really set this up to work with the displacement and so the displacement isn't really working properly and I believe that's mainly because the geometry isn't really best for a displacement but because this is already a really cool asteroid model I actually don't want to use the displacement so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right over here over here on the asteroid material I'm gonna click on this button it kind of looks like two pieces of paper and that's gonna duplicate it and now it's asteroid.001 so because I duplicated it it has the same exact data but it's a separate material so I can now just click on the displacement right here and I can click on X to delete it and there we go now it's not using the displacement but because we've added this to an asteroid object um, it looks really cool it looks like an asteroid we don't really need that displacement and it does look really cool all right and there we go so there is the finished procedural asteroid material so that's gonna be it for this video thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope it was helpful and again if you'd like to help support this channel and also purchase this procedural material then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have links down in the video description, and that's a great way to help support this channel. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.